keep those emails coming, very informative about what you're thinking and doing. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad will address the United Nations today, calling for an end to Israel and a new world order. The UN is also is allowing this speech on the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur. Here is President Obama's response to Ahmadinejad's incendiary remarks from earlier this week. Listen to this. Make no mistake, a nuclear armed Iran is not a challenge that can be contained. It would threaten the elimination of Israel, the security of Gulf nations, and the stability of the global economy. And that's why the United States will do what we must to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Zudi Jassa from the American Islamic Forum for Democracy joins us this morning from Phoenix, Arizona. Dr. Jassa, thanks again for joining us. Always good to see you, sir. Thank you, Stuart. It's great to be with you. Now, at the end of the session at the UN yesterday, Pakistan's president suggested that we make a law, a universal global law, that said you may not insult the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, we, now, today, we've got Ahmadinejad standing in front of the United Nations on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year for Jewish people. Um, it seems like there really is... Uh, well, how would I say it? I mean, a, a real difference here between the way Islam is being treated and the way Jewish people are being treated. You're a, a practicing Muslim. How do you see this? Absolutely. And uh, I'll tell you, Stuart, I wrote today in the Dallas Morning News a piece called that we need tough love for the Arab world and the Muslim community because I find it insulting as a Muslim that some people and our government and uh, the free world thinks that we need to be treated differently than any other faith community that's respected, that somehow Muslims need to be coddled and, or they'll implode and, and do violence, and in effect holding us to different standards, which I find to be actually bigoted, that somehow we need to be treated uh, uh, gently but not given the same respect and equal rights and therefore given the same often disrespect, which is part of free speech, etc. And as our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrate their most holy day today, we find uh, you know, Adolf Ahmadinejad giving speeches that are genocidal, and our president being the weakest. I mean, this is even worse than 79, Stuart, because 79 was just about Iran. Today, this is much more than Iran. You see America in retreat in Pakistan, Afghanistan, in the Arab world, and, and we are missing in action. It's almost as if the Obama administration's doctrine is an abandonment doctrine rather than actually one of, but, of strength. Dr. Jasser, your position is a, you're in a tiny minority. Uh, we very rarely hear from practicing Muslims the kind of opinions that you've frequently expressed on this program. I put it to you, you've really lost the debate. and You've not lost the debate, you've lost the numbers. You have no numbers on your side, do you? Well, I, I disagree, Stuart. We have no numbers when it comes to the loudest voices, the strongest forces of evil between the old soil in the Middle East that was tilled by the Mubaraks and the Assads of the world and the theocrats like uh, Ahmadinejad. But lost in the din is the quiet minority, the majority that need soft power of America, of the West, to defend them and stand by them from the grassroots up. But they're not getting any attention. They're not having riots. And they've had demonstrations even in Libya just in the past few days at the Washington Post talked about today, and yet we've been ignoring them because the president doesn't want to make a case for liberty. The president wants to stay away from meeting with leaders of the free world and saying that we are not only behind them, we want to lead from the front for the change and the tipping point towards freedom and not be pushed around by the bullies like Iran and that are continuing to feed genocide as they're doing in Syria. But he doesn't want to do that. He's either worried about election politics or I don't know what formulation he's using, but it's truly a post-American era. And the majority well, of Muslims, I think, Stuart, are waiting for that leadership. Okay, now here's, here's a key question. How would moderate Muslims, people like yourself, how would you respond if Israel, with America's help, attacked Iran and attempted to destroy its nuclear facilities? And what would be your response? Well, for those of us that live in the free world and believe in freedom, if that is the last resort and the only way to prevent them, we'd understand that, you know, suicide bombing on steroids is Iran having nuclear weapons. So we understand that if you're going to defeat radical Islam and political Islam, you cannot allow a genocidal maniac like Ahmadinejad and his uh, a clerical council to have nuclear weapons. And we understand living under the theocrats. Uh, and as we see now in Egypt, remember the Brotherhood only had 25% of the vote, so most 
most Muslims. There was a green revolution in Iran in 2009. I don't think many of the millions that were in the streets that we abandoned would be that upset with seeing even their own government uh, prevented from engaging in type of uh, uh, posturing with nuclear weapons that would put their entire country at risk. Dr. Zudi Jasser, a frequent guest on this program and a welcome guest. Thanks for joining us again, sir. Thank you, Stuart. Appreciate it. All right, back to football.